What's your name? Ron. 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 Linder. Yeah. Caitlin. Right, right, right. Yeah. Um, so what were the first things you thought when you met Ron? Oh, I thought he was a really nice guy, but I, I thought, if you told me that we were going to get married, and, nah. and, and then here, here, here we are, and it's been all these years. Why do you think you've lasted so long? I think the most important thing is um, communication, and, uh, and you, it's really really important not to go to bed angry. I, I, I really, you know, no matter what, you have to make up before you go to sleep. I don't think it's good to go to bed angry. And like if I'm going to go away, I always leave a note for him on his pillow, under his pillow. You'd be surprised if it wasn't there. <laughs> That boy, you can just see now, you forgot. <laughs> Does he always leave a note when he goes away? No, he doesn't. Which really upsets me, and I like look for it. Because it's my thing to leave a note. But he needs to do it too. When I do it go When I go for it sometime, not overnight, but sometime. But I don't go any place anymore without you. So. Yeah. Why do you think your marriage has lasted so long? Um, when we got married, we agreed that uh, we each had separate lives. Uh, professionally, we're very different, and that we would come together and share those lives and not try to compete, not try to have one dominate the other, but share them and give each other the space and the time to make those lives possible. And I think that has a lot to do with it. Uh, we, I, fortunately, I'm not an actor. Although if you're a teacher, you're a little bit of an actor. But, um, and I taught most of my life, so uh, I understood what acting was. But I wasn't a competitor, and uh, I think that was an important part of our relationship. And she's right, you don't go to bed angry. You don't carry uh, indifferences and problems and issues that are resolvable. You don't carry them any, any longer than part of the day. You try to resolve it before you sleep on it because sometimes that's not the best thing. Okay, what are some things you've learned from your years of, years of marriage that, that uh, people might find useful? I mean, you mentioned not going to bed angry. Are there anything else that well, I mean, it's, it's, it's like communication and that you're a team and you have to give, it's not, you know, people say you have to give 50-50, it's not, it's 100-100, you have to give, each of you have to give 100%, it's not easy. Well, no relationships are easy, but, um, but it's worth it and you just have to, you know, Say this is a, you know, it's, it's a, lot, a lot of people just give up too easily. And, you know, if, if, we ever, if every time we've had a disagreement, we gave up, you know, but we just pick ourselves up and plow through it. It's, it's worth it. What are some values that you guys hold in common that have perhaps strengthened and solidified your relationship? I think as you uh, as you get older and and you're married. Right. goes into 20, 30 years. I think it moves from uh, love and infatuation and all those things that start the relationship into some very significant attachments. You're, you're attached and your life doesn't exist without that other person. And uh, I think both of us feel that we don't know what we do without each other. At some point, one of us may go before the other, and that's that, that's a scary part for both of us because we don't know what kind of life we would have without each other because we're so close to sharing and doing everything together. Um, I Thank you for coming. Good to see you again. I gave it to you then. I have the part. Okay, yeah. I'll on the back of it. Okay, I'll email yeah. you about okay. Wednesday. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Kate, what are some...
there some values that maybe you and your husband hold in common that you think would be really important? Or things that you both believe in or committed to? Um, just to be to be truthful, I, you know, I uh, I don't like liars, and I'm just I. Uh, yeah, I uh, just to be honest and and truthful, and even if the person, if you, you know they're going to be mad and they might not agree with something, you just have to say, look. This is I don't agree with this, and you might not agree with me, but this is how I feel. I have to tell you that this is, this upsets me. You know, this is how I feel about it. And you can either agree with me or not agree with me, but you know, we're two different people. We're not going to think the same on everything. But you have to give and take, and you have to be flexible. You have to be flexible. Can't be all one way. And sometimes he's going to get his way about certain things and sometimes I'm going to get my way about certain things that the other person might not agree with. You about Jewish? Yeah. Well, I converted. he converted. Oh, really? I converted. Yeah. What, what was that like? Uh, that was interesting. Uh, I was born into a Lutheran family and uh, I was actually pretty active. I was uh, president of the Luther League, which is a kind of youth group, and I even gave a couple of sermons on Youth Sunday. And the, our preacher, our, our, our minister, thought I should be uh, a minister like him. And he came to me when I was about to graduate from high school, and he said, well, you're going to religious school, aren't you? You're going to seminary. I said, no, I don't think so. He says, why not? I said, well, I have a pro problem with the concept of original sin by sinful, unclean. And I, he, you know, he said to me, he said, I have a problem with that too. <laughs> I said, well, that's kind of why I'm not really. And I also grew up uh, among um, grandparents who were fundamentalists. So I, I saw some extremes of Christianity. And uh, when I met Kate, I thought uh, Judaism means something to me. It, it's, um, it, it's, it answers a lot of questions that uh, I couldn't get answers to in Christianity, uh, in the New Testament. The Old Testament seemed to be a little more reliable. So uh, I, I converted. I went to Temple Emmanuel in uh, San Francisco and went through the whole process. And before we got married, I converted to Judaism. Did she insist or you did this? Not at all. No. no. She cracked the whip? No. no, in fact, I made it really difficult for him because I didn't want, I wanted him to, if this is something he wanted to do. So I didn't want to say that I, he would come back at me and say, you forced me to do this, it's not what I want to do. So I didn't help him at all. Um, he did it all on his own because that was something he wanted to do. That's how I felt it should be because I didn't want I didn't want to be the one saying you have to do this. So, so what was the conversion process like? Uh, it was good. It was uh, very educational, very informative, and it uh, opened some doors that uh, were never opened before because of the difference in faith and the various beliefs. And it showed me to a great extent we have more in common than we do difference. Who's we? Uh, all religions, humanity in general. That Religions really have more in common that's different, yet a lot of the differences seem to be uh, part of the conflicts we're having even today uh, between uh, the Muslim community, the Jewish community, the Christian community. Uh, it, it's, it's very upsetting to see how these, what I conceive to be somewhat minor differences, are responsible for such major conflicts. And uh, it's disturbing. I, I think one of the most exciting things we could do in the next year or so is to visit Israel and see where all of this happened. I'm, I want to go to the, I want to go to the wall. I want to go. No, never we're, supposed to go we're supposed to go, but the trip fell through, so I was really disappointed.